Hello, everybody. Rick Garcia with G12 Communications. Uh, today, I'm pretty excited to, to welcome to uh, the call Josh Gross. Josh, welcome to the call. Thanks. I'm glad to be here, Rick. So Josh is a CCIE. What that basically means is he's a Cisco certified internetworking expert. He's got 18 years of telecom experience and really 10 years of dedicated Cisco experience. What I find really interesting about your background is you've got experience in building large scale Cisco platforms. So anyone who's looking at uh, staring at a big Cisco platform that has PSTN connectivity uh, still in there and is interested in asking uh, Josh some technical questions, you're offering up your, your CCIE expertise and, and, uh, and, and knowledge and experience at, n at no charge to the customer. Yep. We can, you know, we can do a quick consult, uh, WebEx screen share, depending on what it is you're after. If it's more than just questions, if you want to take a look at what your hardware is, what it's capable of, that type of thing, we can do that. No problem. Um, zero cost, like, like Rick just said. So as I've kind of been in the industry and seen things start moving towards SIP and been working with G12 and their SIP trunking, I've noticed large enterprise customers struggle trying to convert to SIP. They struggle with the configurations that they need, uh, even taking the first step just to understand what it's going to take to get there, what their equipment is capable of currently, what kind of hardware upgrades or uh, licensing they may or may not need in the Cisco world. As everybody knows, when you, when you talk about Cisco, licensing gets a little hairy. But I hate to see customers turning away from making that step into SIP trunking as their primary connection to the PSTN because of that, right? When you're talking about Cisco, typically your connection out to the PSTN is through a voice gateway. You have configs on there that are, that are very old, PRI connections typically, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So it's good to get in there, take a look at what's going on, the dial plan, what's set up currently, and on the call manager side as well. So you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to take to get converted over to SIP. Because once you make that connection, you want to make sure you're SIP all the way through. It just simplifies everything at that point, right? You don't want to try to go SIP to the PSTN and then uh, you know, H323 from your gateway back to call manager. So outside of saving money and and simplifying things. What are some real world things that people or companies could experience? How does your life change? Yeah, well, I mean, there's there's different areas you could talk about with that. So as far as simplifying things, the troubleshooting can become a lot easier, right? When you once you're SIP all the way through and you can follow those those PCAPs and those SIP traces from call manager, from the voice gateway, from your carrier side, all the way through, it becomes much, much easier to see when you have internet working issues or dropped calls, call quality issues, all that stuff becomes quite a bit easier to troubleshoot. And then you can also eliminate some of that MGCP config that dumps all over your gateways. You can eliminate some of the dial plan stuff that happens in there when you have POTS on one side and VoIP on the other. There's all sorts of, of, of areas where your life can be easier from the IT side, right? From, the, right. from the, What's super nice about the Cisco side is, or, or the voice gateway side of this, of this configuration that happens is you can run everything simultaneously, right? So even if you're on a legacy configuration, you can simultaneously configure SIP to that voice gateway, get the, the SIP configuration all the way through to, to your carrier and run those, those tests uh, at the same time without having to port your numbers away first and then hope everything works later, right? You get your, your SIP trunk side set up all the way through, SIP into call manager, you can get a test DID going fairly quickly in that scenario. And then you can make all your test calls, inbound, outbound, 911, supplementary services, all that stuff without having to, to drop anything on, on your production side. Uh, on an outbound side, do you, do you have customers or do you typically go, hey, let's, let's send some live traffic outbound? Is it just testing outbound? Typically the IT staff will convert themselves first yeah. uh, and then just test that out, make sure they're not getting any issues that they're not expecting. So you'll, you'll, you'll want to do some thorough testing and that's the kind of stuff that we already have mapped out some test plans and things like that, that, that can really help save some time and some heartache. Um, Perfect. So, so talk to me about redundancy. When you go with a carrier who's going to deliver over the internet, you will typically, and you should be able to connect to multiple data centers. So within your configuration uh, on the on-prem side, you can have multiple destinations, right? Preferenced out or round robining, that type of thing. One data center's down, you try the others and you're good to go. So what you gain there is a single configuration on your carrier side 
can now reach you at multiple locations. Whereas when you're on PRIs, you may be able to have two PRIs on two voice gateways to separate that out, but then it depends on if your carrier can uh, end fast or, or trunk group those two PRIs or how that failover is going to work. Right. It simplifies the failover process quite a bit from uh, you know traditional PRI telephone service. So, so tell us about faxing uh, with Cisco and SIP. One of the things that happens is uh, people will go to convert to SIP and they will overlook the fact that they have, uh, you know, ATA analog telephone adapters on their network running traditional fax machines. And when they have their gateways connected with PRIs, uh, it's a very limited amount of time that that traffic is on the IP network. Right. Uh, when you convert all the way over to SIP, now your IP for a much longer portion of that call leg. So what'll happen is carriers will either not support T38 or they will implement it incorrectly Right. That's another one where there's a lot of configuration that can break that. So it's just a consideration. You, if your organization is heavy into fax, it's something, you know, when you get that test EID, you probably want to point that at your, at your ATA at some point and do some inbound outbound fax testing for sure. Good deal. Well, I'm going to ask you another question. Tell me about your porting experience uh, uh, with G12 because, you know, when you tell a customer, Hey, you know, seriously, don't worry about porting. It's going to be just fine. You know, no one ever takes you seriously because they've been through, if you've been in the business for 15 years, right, you've done maybe one or two migrations. None of them have gone well, right. you know, to, or, or to expectation or to what you were sold. Yeah. So to pat you on the back, porting with you, <laughs> honestly, it's been probably the smoothest porting experience we've had with the different carriers, right? You don't run into a lot of issues. And when we have run into issues here and there with a, with a reject or for whatever reason, some block of numbers didn't port, the resolution has always been very quick after having worked with you guys and pretty much all the big carriers out there opening tickets and trying to work through people, trying to get to where you need to be within some of these large uh, providers. It's a problem, right? Yeah. And you run into people who, if, if they can't find the immediate reason why it might be their problem, they will immediately just just dump your case, right? Or not yeah. want to work with you. And I've never had that experience with G12. Not everyone knows that our background is in wholesale services where we actually served the carriers before us. But it is one of the things that allows our technical team to identify issues that could potentially be beyond G12 or in a region. Not being a G12 issue, but we're still working it with our customer. Yeah, exactly. And that... I. I don't know how you put a value on that, right? You only know the value of that if you've been on the phone with a Verizon or, a, <laughs> you know, trying, good luck trying to get support with bandwidth.com, right? Like it's, it's, it's not fun, you know? Right. I, if I need support from G12, quick email, always a quick response, packet capture, SIP traces, no problem. Yeah, good, that's awesome. What would you say to a guy who's sitting there contemplating, hey, what can I do in my capacity as the, as the Cisco guy, as the, as the telco guy person in this organization, what would you tell him? Well, what I would say is take a deep look at the service that you have now, what you're being charged for it, what, what benefits you're getting from it, and then compare that to what you would get with SIP trunking. It's not always just dollars and cents. I think we kind of talked about it a little earlier. The, yeah. the ability to, to expand service, to increase the, the number of trunks, right? The number of concurrent connections, you know, in an instant almost is, is, is valuable, especially now, right? When volume, tr call volume, traffic changing um, all the time. With Cisco now, MRA being huge, uh, people weren't rolling it out before because they didn't need it, right? People were on the phone at the office. Now they're remote. It's changed the level of traffic. So in some instances, they've actually had to, uh, they, they would benefit from a decrease actually in the number of connections that they have, depending on the scenario. Scale up and scale down. Yep, scale up and scale down uh, quickly, right? Which is not something you can do when you're talking about uh, traditional telephone service, PRIs, POTS lines, all that stuff. It's a long process to get that going. So it's clear where the industry is going, right? And it's not PRIs and POTS lines, it's SIP trunking. That's where it's got to be. That's where you need to be looking. Um, don't, let, don't let the process scare you if you don't have the experience or understand how to make that conversion. Uh, definitely interested in working with anybody who, who sees a need for it, for sure. Man, thank you so much for, for taking the time and sharing that with everyone.
Yeah, absolutely. It's my pleasure.